right, hello there, thrill seekers. That was, of course, the thrilling song, Oh Bondage Up Yours, originally by the X-Ray Specs. I don't think that was the first song that my first band in high school ever learned. That was Max with two M's and two X's. Uh, that was the late, great Mark McKelvey played drums, and my friend Mike Duffy played bass, who, as far as I know, he's still around. Mark uh, left us a few years ago, but Mike is still around. And uh, that, I don't think that was the first song we ever learned, but it was our best song. It was the song that we played the best and that, that people liked. And, and most people in Wadsworth, Ohio, had no idea it was a cover. They probably thought we wrote it. And I never, in, in those days, learned the words to it. So I just sang the words this morning that, that I used to sing. I, I'm sure those are completely wrong. Uh, much uh, respect to the late, great polystyrene, also passed on, was the singer for that band. All right. Um, so on the subject of bondage, this is something that comes up a lot in when you read Eastern uh, religions. Uh, in Western religions, in Christianity in particular, probably in Islam too, I'm not sure, the object of the game, if you will, is salvation. So we have sinned and fallen short of God, and what we need is to be saved from our sins by uh, Jesus or Muhammad or whoever. Uh, in Buddhism, the idea is liberation from bondage. And if you go through uh, Nishijima Roshi's Shobo Genzo, I couldn't find the word bondage when I did a search through the PDFs of the first two volumes, but I did find the word liberation a lot, and liberation is often as a contrast to bondage. So uh, even though it doesn't use the word bondage in the Nishijima cross version, other versions of Shobo Genzo sometimes use that English word bondage. I guess maybe Nishijima and cross didn't really like the word bondage. Uh, the word they tend to use is fetter. Uh, so, you know, that's a, a similar, sim, what is that, a synonym of bondage, fet, to be fettered. Uh, and this is kind of a difficult point, I think. It's a difficult, it's made more difficult by the fact that often translators are, play fast and loose with words like salvation and liberation. I, I even when I looked it up yesterday to kind of prepare for this video, found some uh, Indian guru saying salvation and liberation are the same thing. And I think some people uh, think of them, and, and I guess they are kind of synonyms. I, I didn't look it up in Roger's Thesaurus to make sure, but I think you'd probably find places where those are, are listed as synonyms, as words meaning the same thing. But in Buddhism, there's this idea of bondage, and it it's also present in the earlier forms of Brahmanism, Hinduism, that there is this idea of bondage, that we are, it's not that we are sinful and need liberation from our sin, it's that we are bound by usually wrong views, uh, wrong understanding, by a deep misunderstanding, not just a common sort of ordinary garden level misunderstanding of like, I thought that was a, uh, a Hagstrom base, but it's actually a Fender base. Uh, it's more like a, a total misunderstanding of who and what we are. Oh, the sprinklers are turning on. I guess you're going to hear that. Anyway, of who and what we are and why we're here and what we're doing in this life. That's, that's what we're bound by. So when I was looking it up in Shobogenzo, I found a quite interesting paragraph. And it appears in this chapter called Gyoibutsu Yuigi, The Dignified Behavior of a Acting Buddha. And acting Buddha means just acting like Buddha. You know, what would Buddha do? You know, that kind of thing. Doing, doing the right thing, doing ethical action, doing moral action, if you, if you like the word moral instead of ethical. The first paragraph is really weird, and I'm going to read it to you, but I, I don't think I'm going to comment too much on the first paragraph. It's the second paragraph I want to comment on, but I'm going to read the first paragraph because there's only one paragraph before the one I want to comment on, so I might as well read it. The Buddhas always practice to the full dignified behavior. This is acting Buddha. Acting Buddha is neither resultant Buddha nor transformed Buddha and is neither Buddha as the body of subjective nature nor 
Buddha as the body of objective nature. It is beyond initiated enlightenment and original enlightenment and is beyond inherent enlightenment and non-existent enlightenment. And all those weird phrases like non-existent enlightenment, inherent enlightenment, Buddha as the body of subjective nature, etc. All those weird phrases I just told you are in italics, which in this version of Shobogenzo means that they're originally Chinese terms and not Japanese terms. So, and, and I wish Nishijima and Cross had footnoted these because I'm not exactly sure what all these refer to, but there's no footnotes and maybe some scholar out there can put a comment and explain what all those refer to. But he's saying it's none of those things, so it kind of, in that sense, doesn't matter what it refers to because it isn't any of those things. Uh, next. Buddhas like these can never stand shoulder to shoulder with acting Buddha. So all these other Buddhas are not like acting Buddha, which is Buddha in your own behavior. Remember, Buddhas being in the Buddha's state of truth do not expect enlightenment, so don't expect it. Mastery of action in the Buddha's ascendant state of truth belongs to acting Buddha alone. It is never realized by Buddha as subjective nature, that's also in, in uh, italics, so it's Chinese, and the like, even in a dream. Okay, so that's the first paragraph. And like I said, I'd want to comment more on the second paragraph. So let's just get into that. This is where we get into fetters. Because this acting Buddha realizes dignity at each moment, the dignity is realized before the body. So this before the body is a phrase that comes up in Shobo Genzo a lot. And it, I think, this is just my supposition, I suppose. I suppose it's my supposition. Anyway. It, it refers to something that's more basic even than our body. So it's something that's more basic to us even before we have a body. So in Buddhism, there's this idea that we exist before we have a body, which doesn't exactly mean that you existed in time before the moment of your birth, although it could refer to that. But it, it refers more to there's something more intrinsic than, than the body. So let's get... Uh, let's go on. Before verbal expression, the leaking out of the gist of the teaching covers time. Time is in capital letters there. Uh, well, first, first letter. Uh, covers all directions, covers Buddha, and covers action. So this is everything, this acting Buddha. If we are not acting Buddha, we are not yet released from the fetter, there's that word, of Buddha and the fetter of Dharma. We are grouped among Buddha demons and Dharma demons. And in the uh, footnotes, it says uh, Butsuma or Homa. Bu those are de Ma is demon and Butsu is Buddha. And Ho is Dharma. It means idealists who are disturbed by the concept of Buddha and Dharma. That's Nishijima Roshi's footnote there. Uh, next sentence. The meaning of the fetter of Buddha or the bondage of Buddha, if you will, is as follows. When we view and understand Bodhi as Bodhi, Bodhi is enlightenment, we have directly been fettered by that view itself and by that understanding itself. When we think of enlightenment as a special thing over there or in the future or in the past, that's our fetter, that's our misunderstanding, that's our bondage. Passing instantaneously through the moment of consciousness, this moment, never expecting that it might be the period of liberation, we misunderstand Bodhi in vain. So we're missing out on the fact that the liberation we're seeking is this moment. It's right here, even as you're listening to me on this video, and I'm speaking to you on this video. To view and understand Bodhi as just Bodhi, so this is time it's not in italics, so as just Bodhi, Maybe the very view which accords with Bodhi. Who could call this a false view? So to understand things as they are. I remember it as just binding myself without a rope. There's some bondage for you. Binding myself without a rope. What fun is that? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to get blue on you there. <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. It is fetters at every moment or bondage at every moment, continuing endlessly. It is not a tree falling and a wisteria withering. Now, thankfully, there's a footnote there which says, a tree falling and wisteria withering represents the natural falling away of that which binds. It is no more than fruitlessly struggling in caves of the Buddhist periphery. It neither recognizes the sickness of the Dharma body nor recognizes the privation of the reward body. And here's another footnote. 
Uh, Dharma body represents the Sanskrit Dharma Kaya. Reward body represents the Sanskrit Samboga Kaya. Samboga means enjoyment or sensuality, suggests the physical aspect of the body. This sentence suggests that being bound by concepts hinders both spiritual fulfillment and physical well-being. So being bound by concepts, being bound by our own ideas of things. Even theorists, teachers of sutras, teachers of commentaries, and the like, who have heard the Buddha's truth from afar, that's people who don't quite understand it, but even those people say, then to establish towards the Dharma nature a view on the Dharma nature is just ignorance. And that's quoted from the Maka Shinkan, a, a text of the Tendai sect. And Dogen was a student of the Tendai Buddhism before he was a student of Zen. This theorist failed to say that when in the Dharma nature a view of the Dharma nature arises, the Dharma nature is a fetter. Further, he added the fetter of ignorance. It is a shame that he did not know the Dharma nature contains a fetter, but if he recognized that he added the fetter of ignorance, that may have become a seed for the establishment of Bodhi mind. So even, even your concept of ignorance, even your concept of bondage is something that binds you. Dogen is really forthright about this. He really takes everything all the way to the ultimate level, and that's what I like about Mr. Dogen, he, he, really, he really puts it out there. And so even your, I, even any idea, any, even any idea, God, I sound terrible in my grammar, any idea you have uh, becomes a fetter, becomes bondage. What do you do? Well, when he says even ignorance is a fetter, it means even, even thinking that I am ignorant is a fetter. So, so just being naturally as you are is the only way. And this kind of goes back to that idea I talked about when I talked in a couple of days ago about, or was it yesterday? I don't know. <laughs> all days all blend together. But it was something I talked about when I talked about the way we approach meditation as not trying to establish a special state, but actually experiencing the natural state that we have right now in every moment. So that's bondage, and that's why bondage is up yours, I guess. Sorry. I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, intro didn't offend anybody, and I'm really sorry if it did. And I just want to make one little comment at the end about this tragedy that happened in Texas. There was a shooting at a school, and it's a terrible thing, and I thought about making a video about it, but what can you say about things like that? Things like that happen and there are politicians who propose political solutions and there are advocates of this and that who, who propose their solutions. It, it cuts close to home for me because my wife is, she used to be a teacher and now she's what they call an instructional coach at a school which is a teacher of teachers. Uh, so she works at a school so this happens and a close friend of mine was also involved many years ago in a school shooting in Canada of all places. Uh, you didn't think they happened there, but, but they do from time to time. Maybe not as often as in the United States, but they happen. And then I was just talking to a friend of mine in Mexico saying, who said that uh, yesterday in Guanajuato, which is where my wife's family is from, uh, 13 people were killed in a, a shooting there. So these, these things happen, and we can give our, our thoughts and prayers to them, and I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, feeling this obligation that we must say something about them, which I'm obviously feeling right now since I'm saying it at the end of this video, um, I don't know. Sometimes saying, staying silent is, is a good way to, to accept these things. Accept is probably a bad word. You don't want to accept them in the case of, in the sense of just saying, well, we accept it, we just live with it. You want to do something about it, but what to do about it is quite complicated, so I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, if you want to donate to me saying more things about things, you can go to the URL you are seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info 
www.patreon.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually my only ways of making a living, and I appreciate your support. But as always, like the butterflies that are flying around this yard right now, uh, this is offered for free. Butterflies are free, and so is this video. So you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Stay well, and be good. Hi, Ziggy. How you doing? You having a good time in your sunbeam? Hey, look at the folks. Ziggy, Ziggy, look at the folks. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.